time for a road trip, don't you think? Yay! It's been too long. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say uh, we go to somewhere east? We can't go any farther west. No, we <laughs> go to the ocean. Let me think of some ideas here. How about Georgia? <laughs> Georgia sound good? No, I think too bad country to me. I'm a city girl. Let's see. All my exes live in Texas. All my exes live in Texas. And that's why I hang my hat in Tennessee. Texas. We are not going to Texas to see your exes. No way. But I love Texas. No way. This one. Okay. Well, I'm standing on the corner of Winslow, Arizona, and it's such a fine part to see. It's a girl, my lord, in a fat bed Ford, slowing down to take a look at me. How about Arizona? Arizona sounds good. Well, let's do it. Okay, Arizona it is. Yeah. Give me five! Every time when we are getting ready for the trip, there are so many things that we need to do. The day before our trip, cleaning and cooking. I mainly do the things inside the RV, and Mark will do outside the RV. So let's take a look what he's doing right now. Is there lots of uh, ashes? Oh, it's really dirty up here. It's <laughs> dirty as I've ever seen it. Yeah, in campfire. So we have a lot of uh, ashes, dust on top of our RV. Time for the girl to get a bath. <laughs> uh, this is one of the things we are doing before we are hitting the road. Do you need me to get you anything? I needed you earlier because uh, <laughs> the hose got stuck. But. You didn't hear me knocking, probably. I heard you, but I saw you were just checking. <laughs> I didn't know that you wanted to communicate with me. <laughs> <laughs> I should have called you, I guess. Yeah, that's one thing that when one person is outside on the roof, need the help from another person, you have no way to communicate. We need to have a walkie-talkie. I think what I'll have you do, though, is hmm? lower the back. Oh, so the water can come yeah, slide so it down? Yeah, backwards. Down. Okay. I'm trying to keep it off the windshield. Okay. Rest the front up. Yeah. Do you want more? No, that's good. Oh. Okay, it's good. So this way we tilt the front up and lower the rail down so water can go down. So now we are going to turn off the engine. So now you see all the water is dripping down from the rear. So keep the water off on the roof and the topper. Work harder! I'm as fast as I can go. <laughs> so the day before our trip is our busiest day. So when Mark is busy washing our RV outside, my job is to cook enough of food for us to eat on the road from here to our destination we will sure make some stops like a lunch or dinner and we don't want to waste any time cooking clean the kitchen or wash dishes so I like to make some food ready to eat so when we are uh, taking a break we can just heat up the food and eat really quick so we don't need to waste any time 
to find a place to eat and we have to park and decide what to eat. Okay, so now we are filling up the water. Just enough for on the trip. Right. So I'm going to do a little over a quarter tank. That's plenty, plenty for two showers. You can kind of see the tank level in here. The line's right here. Turn it off now. That's done. Now the fun stuff. The poo poo hose. We flushed the tank Wednesday. Yeah. Just so, because we knew we wouldn't have much time to prepare. So there's only a little bit of a refuse, a little honey in there. Mm. So I have a garbage bag I use in here. But that's cool, cool. Keep the hose in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what that's I'll also that. do first is I'll drain it. I'll put it over the fence and let it drain. Uh -huh. so there's nothing in it. Now, the one tricky thing is, there's a little, see this little U shape here? Mm -hmm. That works good for a, a vapor barrier so the sewer pipe gases don't come up because there's a little water trap down here. Mm. But the problem with that is that when you take it off, it's there. So, yeah. so I need to drain that. Mm. So I'm going to start to give a little more room. Oh, we can it hear it. Out. Yeah, I can hear the water draining. It's mainly gray water because I, after I dropped the honey tank, mm -hmm. uh, I flush it with the gray water. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, that's ready. Now I come in here and I'll take off the jacket. I've got a clear, clear collar jacket in here that I can see the flow as it, it moves down. And so I'm going to take this bottom one off here just twist it that way, unhook it, Ooh. there you go, fresh honey tank tube, and, and then I now, roll it, I'll roll it this way, one and up high, and there's a little bit that runs out when you do that, mm. I also put a brick on this 90 degree elbow here, to hold it down so it doesn't fall off <laughs> when you're dumping, which is pretty important. Mm. So now that's ready to go. Now I'll just take it and just hang it over there. While I'm doing the other chores, that way it will it'll be uh, fairly dry by the time we put it in the bag. And now I'm going to pull up all the utility cables. Yeah. Cable. Power gets turned off on the shore power breaker before I unplug so there's no spark. That's take fine. the covers off, of course. They come off pretty quick. Basically, all like that come off. The reason for the covers is that they keep the tire off out of the UV light and it, it helps to uh, prevent aging because UV light will break down the rubber, the bonding mm -hmm. on the rubber, and it's a problem for uh, sidewall going bad prematurely. For most RVers, they don't wear out their tires, the tires rot first. These tires are about at the end of their life, even though I've got, I don't know, probably half an inch of tread, because they've only got 50,000 miles on them. But pretty soon, uh, yeah, I'll be changing tires, them out. Huh? Definitely the steering tires, for sure. Mm. There's a big debate on whether it's five or 10 years when you change out. The, the more you keep them out of the UV, the longer they'll last, of course. So now I've got all these other things to disconnect. Cable and power and then the water hose, and then we're ready to go. And the, we need to check propane. So before we leave for the trip, we always uh, check the propane tank, how much propane we have left. Our and gauge is right here. Uh -huh. We have half a tank left. We might fill up, you know, when we come back, we go a pretty long time. Uh -huh. About twice a year we, we fill up, because uh -huh. we use electric heat. So the next thing we are going to do is unhook the water hose. You use a water line. You want to make sure it is a uh, drinking water approved line. Uh, that way it doesn't have contaminants in the plastic. 
So there's a little bit of water in here, of course. The other thing you can do is open the valve on the uh, tank fill, and that will help you drain the hose. Okay, finally tackle the water hose in. Yay! You can see now the honey hose is pretty good now. One thing you have to be careful is don't flip it around <laughs> or it'll flip up in your face. Someone told me that. That's never happened to me. <laughs> you learned your lesson, have you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, put it back in. We need to bring that hose with us because we are going to hook up at the alley part. Yeah. Okay, that's done. All I got left is electrical. Bring yeah. the slides in. Yeah, that's the last thing we do, right? We're about done. Yeah. Also on the bike here, I've got seven straps on this bike. It's like multiple redundancy. Four on the corners. One on the tire, and the most critical thing is making sure this tire doesn't come out of this point here. I also put some foam in here, some sponge in here, uh, so the tire doesn't wear on the, the sidewall on this rib here. I have yet to install, I've got a chalk flipper back here, but right now I have a little uh, wedge on there, and it helps keep the bike from moving back. Of course, this keeps it from flopping up and down. And I have some really good ratchet straps on this side. More than anything else, you just want to make sure the bike doesn't fall off the back, right? Of course, yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> so the front ones really are the most important. I don't have as many on this side. If they failed, it would fall towards the RV. Um, you know, and I could, you could argue that I need a third one somewhere, but I don't really know a good place to locate it. Because you want to make sure most of your force is forward to that corner on the wheel wedge. That, that kind of defines the entire lock of the bike on the uh, tray. Some more in the back, and then I have another one of these wedges back here. And I'll keep it from rolling. The bike also is in first gear, so the transmission's locked. Oh, and also there's a cruiser lift. It's electric winch. One of the problems is this tray tends to bobble up and down because there's a little play on one of the arms. So they later on provided this turnbuckle. It tightens it down towards the bottom hitch here. There's also a three-point hitch uh, that's mounting, so you've got really high payload on that. The lift will do up to a thousand pounds. One other thing, but right here, this bar here comes up to this base here, mm -hmm. uh, and then it sits down on this pin so that there's no tension on the cable, so there's no cable wear, which is important. But the problem is there's about a quarter inch flex on the back side here. There's a little flex at this point. So I put some rubber, I took, cut up a coaster, rubber coaster, and I wedged that in there and so there, there tends to be less bouncing back and forth. But that's certainly one of the criticisms of the cruiser lift over hydro lift. It's a little more flexing, you know, than hydro lift. One thing up. I may get is they make a tight cover that's really tight to the bike and it would keep it cleaner. Last time when I hauled my Red Indian, I had a Chieftain, I had just a regular loose cover and uh, it, it would abrade the clear coat here and it, and it wasn't as shiny so that's not good okay back part is done right yep so okay. if you're on shore power you want to make sure your outlet your breaker is off before you unplug and before you plug in that way there's no spark that can damage your plug and carbonize it if it's damaged then the resistance goes up and it starts to get hotter and hotter as you damage it more so you're careful about that so in here you look for spiders first. <laughs> Turn off the power on ours. This is kind of an old park, so the infrastructure is not so luxurious. <laughs> <laughs> and then unplug, and I think we're ready to go, huh? Yeah. You want to go to Arizona? Uh, yeah, and uh, make sure all the basement doors are locked. Yeah, I got to lock those up. Close our umbrella, just in case it gets too windy. The wind can flip it over. It happened before. 
so we need to make sure it's closed. And also, you want to make sure you're not standing in water when you unplug. Of course, I'm, I'm actually unplugged already, but just in case there's any voltage potential, you want to make sure you don't get electrocuted. I've also got a splitter on here since there's only one outlet and that allows me to power off the trailer without relying on the variac. So it's a little hard to get the plug out. Yeah. Whew. That's it, huh? That's it. Yeah, last thing we do is um, disconnect the power. Lock everything up. Oh, yeah. So we have to make sure every door is locked. The first time we drove the RV back, one door popped up. And uh, that one requires different lock. You need a key for this one. Hmm. Okay. Continue. Okay. All locked? All locked. Let's roll! Okay, let's go! Let's hit the roll! What do you think, Johnny? Johnny is doing good this time. He's not shaking at all. Right, all Johnny? Right. You're such a good boy. <laughs> Okay, now leaving our home base to Lake Havasu in Arizona. Bye. 557 miles. So one of the things about being a full-time RVer is you need to be really good at doing business on the road, right? Mm -hmm. Rebecca's kind of managing the text <laughs> as I text. talk to my customer and uh, and then I have another thing where we're looking at a startup company and yeah. so making phone calls and trying to network figure out how we can align to uh, do some business. Yeah, that's the good thing about RVers. <laughs> do business on the road while yeah. you are driving on the road. You can still do business. I just got an hour of working while I was driving. <laughs> <laughs> just need to have cell service and uh, internet and you can pretty much have your office while they're going down the road. Yeah, office on the road. Mm -hmm. So now traffic is good. I don't need to really keep eyes on traffic for pilot. Now I'm going to take it easy. Bye. <laughs> Taking a nap. Before you go to sleep, I need to get a drink. <laughs> get a drink? So, the other water. Could you please fetch me a yeah, water? That'd be okay. fine. Okay. Hard to eat a banana when you're going down the road. You gotta feel it. Yeah, got another banana and bottle of water for you. Alright, thank you honey. That's a good thing when you're traveling at Class A. Yeah. <laughs> you can get, you can get good day. service. Let's have a banana together. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> Too much sun on Johnny, huh? Johnny, you want your shade down? Let's put the shade down, okay? okay we, we just, just turned 50,000 miles on our baby. She had a birthday. So 2007 and it just now turned 50,000 miles in 11 years. I'm so spoiled now with the you are so spoiled. full rest. <laughs> I can ride comfortably and fall asleep. It's not a long trip for you, is it? No, it's really short. <laughs> it's just sleeping out. I took a nap and I woke up. Hey, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Beeping sounds on again, huh? Okay. Sometimes on, sometimes off. So the beeping sound is the pressure for air brakes. I had this problem two years ago, and we thought we fixed it because the cable connection tended to be loose. Just recently, it started becoming a problem again. It wasn't much of a problem today until I turned my lights on, and now it's been going on and off a lot more. I know it's voltage related. Probably the lights are pulling more voltage off the 12 volt chassis system. Probably a bad connection somewhere down in the harness, which is what we thought was the case last time. But it's gotten worse tonight because the headlights are on. That's my theory. 
tires got up to 85 degrees at peak. Now that one doesn't read at all, I guess because it's cold. The rear ones have 10 pounds less than the front. And we were at, when we were at peak, the rear ones were above the pressure of the front ones. Because we have more weight in the back. No, we are going to stay here for the night now. the trailer or my truck? Park right here would be okay. Huh? Maybe trailer is better. We'll right <laughs> trailer. Yeah, trailer go together. <laughs> we don't want to get sandwiched by better, trucks. Better for Johnny. Okay, I think we're here for the night. cold as last time we were here. Maybe it's not late enough. Yeah, maybe. We just, uh, what? But I remember that one day during the day, it was really cold. Oh, nice Can-Am. Come here, Johnny. Come here. Let's wipe your feet. Successful trip so far, huh? Mm -hmm. Look at that food, huh? Were you hungry, Johnny? Wait for mommy and daddy, then you can have a cookie, okay? Mm. Oh, good to get here, huh? So hungry. Yeah. We didn't have lunch, really, did we? We always skip lunch. Make the trip on the road while there's daylight. Mm. Okay. Well, so we made it, huh? Yeah, we made it at the Tihachapi. So normally first, we... First night yeah, first layover. Night. So here's our route. We left San Jose. We took uh, 101 to 46 to 58 to 99 through Bakersfield. Yeah, so total mileage is around 300. Around 300. And the reason, the reason we went 101 down south farther is because we don't like Highway 5 during heavy traffic. Uh, this is Thanksgiving weekend coming up so it's stacked cars in the left lane and then in the right lane are the trucks so people start to try and slide in from the right and then they hit their brakes when they slide in and it just uh yeah, so train wrecks the whole group. rather to take a little bit route a little longer detour. yeah detour yeah, but better traffic but much better roads yeah traffic but, wise yeah but today is, there are lots of cars yeah so even even on like 48 yeah. It was bad. But then when we got to Bakersfield, it was oh, bad, right? Nightmare. It was a nightmare. Just, so know, many five, traffic. <coughs> hit it at the wrong time. Five o'clock, yeah, rush hour. Rush hour on Friday. <laughs> on a Friday, on a holiday coming up. Yeah, so we left San Jose 11.40. And then we arrived at the Tehachapi 6.40. So yeah. seven hours. We made a pit stop in between. We did a break and then we, we did, did a fuel. Yeah right so before steps. we hit five crossing yeah. five uh -huh. so far we probably use 40 gallons 40 of diesel gallon. so 120 dollars to get to here mm -hmm. diesel in california is ridiculous we had to pay 419 a gallon mm -hmm. and we are pretty much we're we're pretty out. much a little <laughs> over halfway yeah i'm, I'm yeah. definitely tired because yeah. my co-pilot didn't drive at all <laughs> she slept and mentally with you <laughs> driving with you. but I pay attention to the traffic I videotaping all the traffic yeah right just in case if anything happened I'm still tired I know <laughs> okay now look at the our doggies oh tired tired are you boy, ready for huh? bed I think we are ready for bed huh we gotta go pee pee one more time and then we can go to bed okay yeah He's Which really tired. tired. Yeah, he's tired a bit. He didn't have, he normally has like five naps a day, <laughs> right? So. Okay, we're going to see you tomorrow. We are going to have a good night's sleep. We call it for the night now. Oh, tired. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thanks for joining our journey to Lake Havasu. In the next few episodes of Lake Havasu series, we will show you the activities we did and the places we visited. Subscribe and make sure you click the little bell to get notifications when we release new video every Saturday. 
If you enjoy this video, give us a like and a comment below if you have any question. See you next time on La Vie Flotante.